A very good morning. My name is Isaiah Phillips and King to like you and welcome to the Potter's Gate live broadcast. It's a pleasure to have you join this morning. Um, we will be looking into some very interesting uh, um, topic. In fact, we've been looking at this topic for a while, but I believe that today we will be entering into another dimension of that which the Spirit of the Lord will have us, you know, a uh, uh, highlight in terms of the whole concept of the rebuilding or the restructuring of our foundation. We've been looking at the whole concept of the principle of sure foundation. What kind of foundation do we require in order to be able to move into the reality of the speakings of God, of the demand of God for this new day? We'll be looking into that. So before we go further into that, I'd just like you to sit back while I get myself prepared you know, for this uh, teaching. Just sit back and enjoy the music. God bless you.
gentlemen, you're welcome back. We bless the Lord for the level of insight, wisdom, and understanding He's been releasing to His body of late. There is no doubt that there's a sense of acceleration of the divine mind of God for the church in this season. There's such a clarity, an insight into that which the Father wants the church to know and to understand. As we engage the days before us. And I am very excited to know that heaven has not left us without a witness. That the days we live in are days where there's an unprecedented demand to raise the standard, to, to raise the standard, because the stake is actually very high in this season. Heaven is calling us to build a fresh depth of capacity within the realities of the intentions, the prophetic intentions of God, you know, for our generation. And personally, I am so, so thrilled in my spirit to know that we're living in one of the most exciting season on earth as we see darkness and we see the activities of evil intensify the operations within the whole concept of creation yet we are seeing the, 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 the you know the, the demand of God coming to the fore we're seeing heaven Speaking to his church, his saints, his vessels, the remnants, to come to a new day of sight, to come to a new day of capacity building, in order to function in the full reality of that which the Father has ordained for us. I mean, I am so excited. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited in my spirit because I know without a shadow of doubt. That we're about to see the slaying of some Goliaths. We're about to see the collapse of certain houses. We're about to see the emerging of the order of a new system that will reflect the true concept of the house called the Tabernacle of David. What What a day we live in. What a time. What a season that we need to celebrate. So I really want to welcome you once again to you know, this frequency, this is the Potter's Gate broadcast. The Father has set up this platform to release fresh truth, to bring, you know, his word, his mind to his church, breaking barriers and boundaries of religious walls, breaking the limitations of some pulpits, you know, we've built for ourselves and limitations that stop people from hearing you know the mind of God for the church we have come to that day where the walls are coming down while heaven yes build new walls in the spirit that demarcate and differentiate our identity and our position in him I am so 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 thrilled in my spirit and I want you to understand that we live in a time where we can no longer compromise we can no longer you know, defy the position or the place we want to be. We have to choose this day who we want to serve, where we want to be located and found. There are no intermediary, there are no, you know, in between. There are no neutral ground, neutral zone in this reality of what heaven is doing in our time. We, we have to choose, we have to decide. And for us to do that, we need sight. We need sight, we need calibrated sight, we need advanced prophetic sight. We need the ear and ears. We need the ability to to see and to know the voice of the shepherd himself. So these are days that are very holy, very sacred. These are days that are 
you know, requiring us to change our garment, to change our effort, to put on a new divine turban that can help us to appear before God. We are priests unto him. The scripture said he is raising for himself a kingdom of priesthood. This is the day of the Lord. And so we will continue to engage with you as the spirit of the Lord gives us that, you know, grace and voice to speak. One of the things I have noticed of late is that somehow, even when I want to, you know, share online, there's a withdrawal, there's a drawing back. I felt in my spirit that the father is saying that you only speak when I want you to speak. You only declare when I want you to declare. You only sound the trumpet when I want you to sound it. So we come into a day where we've got to understand the holiness of God. That everything we do, that everything we carry out, we represent in terms of the things of the spirit has to be done via the directive of the spirit alone. That we can no longer do things because we need to do it or because we want to please men. Or because we want people to hear our voice. That when people hear our voice, what they should be hearing, in fact, should be the voice of the Lord. Not the voice of a man. We don't want to get to a point where people begin, begin to say, this is the voice of a man. And God is slaying us on that very you know, spot. We don't want to die. We want to live in the full reality of his demand. So we, 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 we've got to understand that everything that we are doing from this season ends forth has to be done clear 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 directives of the spirit we cannot assume we cannot presume we we cannot you know you know just handle the things of god with levity we cannot be charlatan you know ab about the things of the spirit we, we cannot turn our face and pretend as if well it doesn't matter no everything we do has to be done with a sense of righteousness a sense of sacredness a sense of holiness a sense of purity. Yes, so that we can continue to see into the mind of God. See into his demands. See into his ways. See into his will. See into his counsel. See into his purpose. But not just see, but be able to accurately bring those things out in a way and manner that will represent his heartbeat and heart desire. I mean, this, these are days where heaven is basically monitoring every step we take. So, 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 so we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice. We need to rejoice. We need to thank God. We need to be appreciative of, you know, the frequency, the demand of the Lord. We need to thank him for speaking to us in this manner. We need to thank him for coming to us in this new way, in this demand of, of, of divine standard. That it can no longer be that, yes, we've got standard, but that standard has to be divine has to be in alignment with the measurement of his will for this new day heaven is building himself a church a house the ecclesia of god is coming to maturity yes the day of you know uh, 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 weakness and the days of ignorance are long past these are days of purity purity of heart that produces divine knowledge that produces the fear of god these are days where the knowledge of god is producing the fear of God. Where the wisdom of God is being merged, amen, with understanding. Where counsel and power are being united. We are coming into a day of the full reality of that sixth order, leading us into the seventh day. Wow, what a day we live in. So I, I really want us to have a, a, you know, a clear sense of the days we live in, of the times. If we, if we don't understand the nature of the times that we live in, we can, then we cannot really you know, respect the speakings of God you know, within the day. If there is no sense of urgency and sense of reverence and honor with regards to what the Father is speaking, the Father is saying to us in this new day, there's no way we can journey with a mind, with a heart, that is fully ready, fully prepared, that is not here and there, that is not indecisive. There's no way we can move into that dimension, you know, in the spirit that our, our faith is set like a fleet. Hallelujah. I tell you, we are in such a time where our life has to synchronize with what heaven is, is saying. Where the pattern of what we do on earth, amen, is reflecting the pattern of that which is in heaven. That the kingdom of God, as it continues to come into every sphere of our, of our existence, that, amen, there, there are no gaps within. There are no gaps between. 
The Bible says in the restoration of the of the of the of the of the wall in the days of Nehemiah, there were no gaps. We don't want to have gaps in our lives. We want everything to synchronize, to sync into each other perfectly. We want to have a perfect, you know, representative of existence. And so I am truly excited in my spirit. There's no better time to, to be alive than the days we live in. Yes, while arrows are, you know, flying here and there and fires are burning here and there. And all kinds of issues that are happening around us, political instability, you know, financial crisis, you know, uh, uh, economic, you know, collapse. All kinds of crazy things are happening around us that within that we are raising the order of God that the mountain of the Lord's house, amen, is being built, is being exalted high above every other, every other mountain. What a day we live in. That people will see with their own eyes. In fact, it is what people see from, amen, the, the reality, the posture, the condition of our existence that will cause them to stream up. They say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord's house. In Isaiah chapter 2. Come let us go. Because as they see how, you know, the, 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 the challenges of life, the, 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 you know, the, the tsunamis and the wind of life and the fires of life are burning everything men define to be standing. As those things begin to collapse, as the mountains of men begin to collapse, as the institution men have built in their own name and in their own strength begin to collapse, as everything that we have hoped on, we have hoped on and built on and held onto as, you know, as our own icon of, of, you know, of success and victory, as those things begin to collapse, we begin to see the house of God rising in strength. We begin to see the mountain of the Lord's house, amen, becoming grand in the earth, becoming, you know, strong in the earth, becoming glorious in the earth. Wow. What a time. What a day. Those are dimensions of, of, you know, of pattern of existence that, you know, should be taking place within the structures of our being. That within that order, we are growing up, amen. The Bible says, as darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people. We are rising up, mounting up with wings of an eagle. We are rising up and shining forth the light of God. Hallelujah. What a day. What a day that we have seen two orders. As the world continue to, you know, to, to receive judgment through the you know, ungodly standard and philosophy is built, is existing on. That the church that is built upon the patterns and the principles of eternal life is rising in power. Showing forth the way, hallelujah, to go forward. I want to be part of that company of people. Not a company of them that are crying and weeping and wondering, is, is this the end of the world? No, this is just the beginning of something good, something great. This is the beginning of the showing forth of the true ecclesia. In the days we live in, there will be clear demarcation. There will be clarity of what a man is evil from that which is good. People will be able to accurately decide and you know define for themselves which path they want to choose so that at the end of the day nobody will say well i, I, I was not given the opportunity I, I didn't know that was why i made this bad choice no you're going to make a bad choice in this in this day we live in not because you don't know the truth because the truth will be coming to you from every direction heaven will be speaking to you know both to the righteous and to the unrighteous the handwriting of god is all across the world all across the world, be it in the tertiary institution, be it in the primary, amen, be it in our, in our government, you know, prior status, be it in any, mention it, heaven is speaking to us. We're seeing God speaking to us, judging the rich, judging the higher mighty, amen, judging those who think they are untouchable. Heaven is speaking to us. All that we're seeing happening all around us, amen, a clear, direct voice of God. Choose. So we have no choice. We cannot say we don't know. No. Heaven is speaking to us. So that on that day when we are finally, amen, uh, are brought to that point where we need to make that final decision. There's a decision that we all will have to make that will take us to the next level or keep us where we are. When you get to that point where you need to make that decision, you will never be able to say, well, I don't know what to do at this point because heaven must have given you enough information, enough revelation if you're born again. Amen. Enough information if you're not born again, at least to be able to make that first de decision of accepting Christ into your life. 
And if you have accepted Christ, there will be more impartation of truth, amen, to make demand and say, well, you can no longer live or remain in this 30-fold dimension. You've got to come to the next 60 fold. And if you're in 60 fold, hell will be, heaven will be making demand that you've got to leave that 60, that dimension of man, amen, into the day of his spirit. So we, wherever you are, there is a call to migrate. Whatever position you occupy, there is a call, amen, to migrate, to leave that realm, to come into the next day of the Lord. Heaven has been speaking to us of late with regards to the whole concept of Ishmael and Isaac. You cannot, you cannot hold on to your own Ishmael and still want to journey on with the Lord and still want to come to the place of glory. And still want to come to the place of power. And still want to come to the place of authenticity. And still want to come to the place of approval. No. Everything you have produced in the past by your own strength, you've got to let it go. Or else you're not going to travel light. You're not going to come into this new day of the Lord. So if you want to get satisfied with your blessing, amen. The Bible says 12 prince will come out of Ishmael. I'll bless him. If you, want, if you feel that is enough for you, then you're going to remain in that level. But if you're going to go, go on with the Lord, if you're going to come to the next reality, if you're going to come into, amen, the place of the speakings of God, if you're going to come into the place of the activities of the Spirit, if you're going to come into the place of, you know, of governance, of leadership, if you're going to come into the place, amen, where hallelujah, the administrations of heaven is given unto mortal man once again, amen, to govern and rule the earth. If you're going to come into that place where Abraham come into, then you've got to let go of Ishmael, amen, with bread, and the patch of water. You've got to do that. You cannot hold on to that. You can no longer celebrate that which you brought forth with your own power and think heaven will approve that as a concept of success in this new day. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So you make the choice. You need to look into all the things you've built, all the things you've produced by your own strength, by the, by the strength of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You've got to look around your life and you're going to say, well, is it worth it? Am I going to keep this thing or am I going to let them go? And come into divine inheritance. This is the day where we are advancing into, the, into that dimension called the day of promise. Hallelujah. The day, the generation of Isaac are emerging. We might have waited and you think... Ah, Will, will this thing ever work? Will, will I ever come into this reality of what heaven demands of me? Would I ever would I ever step into this season of promise? Would I ever come into that which heaven has promised me? Heaven has spoken to me. You've waited one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, ten years, fifteen years. Now you're beginning to doubt. Come on, don't doubt. The promises of God will never fail. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. I've been in the position in my life where I've almost doubted. I've almost slipped when I consider what men have done, what my colleagues and my contemporaries have achieved. When I look at the things they've done in the natural, I say, wow, Isaiah, what are you still doing here? What, what's going on with you? What are you going to show? When, when you consider what a my men have built in the natural, I tell you, like, like, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, the psalmist Asa said in, in, you know, in, in, in Psalm, in Psalm, eight, you know, seven, seventy three. He said, when I looked at these things that, you know, that the wicked have gotten, they don't fall sick. Everything seemed to be going well for them. They are prospering left, right, and center. They are buying new cars, building new homes. You know, they are giving testimony daily in the church. See what the Lord has done for me. They are singing Abraham blessings and man. And you know in your heart that you are following, you are journeying with the Lord. And it seems as if nothing is coming through for you. And you are wondering, is this thing actually working? I can bet it's working. But if you are not positioned where you can actually see with clarity. He said, until I go, until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then I saw the end of the wicked. I saw the end of this thing men have amassed to themselves. You know, calling prosperity. Until I went to the sanctuary of God. So the sanctuary of God is supposed to be a place where our sight is calibrated. Our prophetic sight is calibrated. To see things the way they actually are. My God. I'm so excited when I look into the scripture. Heaven is speaking to us. So don't give up. Don't let go. Don't throw in the tower. Don't go compromise. Don't drop the standard because of what people have built or because of what you're seeing around you. Don't follow the money bags. Don't follow the charlatans. Don't define your ministry based on what you're seeing out there. The fact that they've built big mansions and they've built, you know, these big cathedrals and, you know, 
big basilicas all around and they're doing things, making noise all around and you're looking at yourself and you said, well, so what's going on? Well, if that is your end game, if that is what you define to be the, the end achievement, if that is what you're looking for as an achievement in ministry, then you've gotten your reward. Because I know that is not what heaven amen, is, is using as a yastic to define a successful minister or successful man. And that's why when I hear people like T.D. Jake says, we don't, we don't need men of God again. We don't, we don't need preachers again. I mean, that is just too much a statement. Even though I understand the concept is trying to say that well, we don't need preachers be behind the pulpit. We need people who can flood you know, you know, the secular world system and transform them. But you cannot, you cannot flood the secular system and transform the secular system by dropping the standard, by compromising, all right? by calling Oprah Winfrey a woman who has denounced God, a woman who said there are all kinds of ways to God, a woman who is into the new age. You cannot invite such a person into the same pulpit that you call God gave you to speak the word of God and you know and share the same pulpit with such a person and, and think that you are serving God. Now, if those are the kind of people you want to be following and you want to be pursuing, you know, as you know, as heroes, as success, you know, as icon of you know of, of the faith, they, my brother, you, you've missed it. My sister, you're going the wrong way. I'm telling you, those people are gonna make you amen to shipwreck your faith. Like I said, these are days where we need to begin to really define. What is successful from what is not? These are days we need to begin to call names. These are days we need to open the eyes of people to see that that thing that you call <laughs> success is not. It's a den of thieves and, and, and robbers. That thing you look at and you admire, that thing you are, 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 you are wishing God, amen, you know, to give to you. If you ever know what is behind the story, you will, you will refuse it. You will reject it. They call the attention of Jesus, amen, to the temple, to the, to the grand looking temple of Herod, you know, of Herod. They say, look at this gigantic, look at this wonder, look at this temple. Jesus looked at it and said, not one stone will be left unturned. Ah, may God give us insight. To see things the way they are in this new day. We cannot afford to be blind. We cannot afford, hallelujah, to walk blindly or to have partial sight. See men walking like trees. No, these are days where we need advanced prophetic sight. We need advanced prophetic sight. We need advanced prophetic sight to see things. To see people for who they are. So that we don't make bad investment. So that we don't drop the standard. So we don't follow the popular voice and the popular opinion. Come on. I'm excited. Why we look not to the things that I see. I am so excited. Beloved, if you're out there, you're listening to me this morning. I want to encourage you. Take your eyes off men. Oh, the Lord just dropped a word in my spirit. Remove the garment of Saul. That you have accepted to go fight in a Goliath. Remove it. It's not going to work. If it's going to work, why didn't Saul wear his own garment to, face, to go face Goliath? Come on. You've got to say, sir, I can't go with this. It's not been tried. There are things God is doing in your life, amen, to, to try, to try, amen, your own weapon. There's something unique heaven is given to you that has been tried at the backside of the wilderness that nobody knew about it. Nobody knew when David faced the lion. Nobody knew when David faced the bear. Nobody knew when David rescued, hallelujah, that ship from the mouth of the bear. Nobody knew. Nobody was there. I guess when he was telling his story to his father and his, you know, his brother, I'm sure they were laughing at him. Oh, come on. You just like to exaggerate. I mean, you like to daydream. Because they couldn't understand that how can you, a young boy, just about 17 years old. You mean you did all this exploit and you never, you, I mean, nobody, no, nobody made you a king. Nobody crowned you. Nobody, you know, called you a lion slayer. <laughs> a bear, a, you know, a bear killer. No title was given to you. Come on. No. There are things God is walking at the backside of the wilderness with your life that nobody sees. There are testimony locked up in your life that nobody know about. But I tell you, the day where God is going to use those things are coming. So don't give up now. Don't throw in the tower. Don't quit. You're on, you're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. Oh, I just feel a stirring in my spirit to speak to somebody out there. Especially if you're, if you're, a, if you're a leader in ministry, you're pastoring, you're pioneering a walk. 
Don't give up. Don't look at all these people. Their days are long gone. Their days are over. There's a new order of, of priesthood that is emerging from the house of Cush, from the, from the house of Judah. Come on. Be encouraged. I guess God wants to encourage you because I'm supposed to be talking about foundation. Well, I guess this links to sure foundation because if our revelation of the true foundation is not established, I'm telling you, we will compromise. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, a destructive foundation is a deformed foundation. A, a, you know, a, a foundation that can be destroyed is a foundation that was, that was never truly built, that was never truly resourced. Hallelujah. So if something can happen to our foundation while we're building, it means that at the very start, at the very beginning of our journey, something went wrong. And that's why the father is saying that, hey, we've got to go back and look into this old concept that we've built so that our faith is now moved. L- listen to this statement. Jesus made this statement. He said, he said, will the son of man find faith when he returns? Will people still be living the life of faith? Or they would have gone into intellectualism. Or they would have gone into the ways of the world. They would have gone into, you know, the idea of Babylon and, and Egypt. They would have, you know, forgotten their identity and their name. And now they are married to all kinds of philosophy in Egypt. New age philosophy. It's fine. After all, God is not that, you know, uh, 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 you know God is not that wicked. He, no, no. Let's, 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 let's tone it down. Tone it down. Come on. What do you tone down? We cannot compromise the values of God in the name of trying to win the people to, to God. No, no. You've got to set the standard. Those who saw Noah build the ark. Not in the days of Noah, the ark was the standard. The, 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 the building, hallelujah, the people were watching. was the standard. The message Noah was preaching was a standard. If you will, get into the boat. Noah did not drop the standard. He kept building what he was shown, what he was told. In the days of building the tabernacle, God gave measure. He gave, he gave standards. He chose, he unpicked the material he wanted. Where do you get this whole idea of dropping the standard, of compromising with the world? No wonder if the, if the world comes to the church, the first thing we do is, you know, we, we just latch onto their talents. We just latch onto their gift. And then we'll put them in positions, in all kinds of positions in the church. Put them in the choir. Then they become, you know, the lead singer. Then they become, God knows, they, then they become the, the, the guitarist, the keyboardist. The, the, all because they've got talent, because they've got influence, because they've got money. And you never take them through a season of training and preparing them. And say, God, you need to sit down and listen and grow up until a period comes where you are ready. Then we can, you know, begin to showcase you. No. Because we look at them as some big people, some big heroes. You know, that reminds me of the story of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this guy by Jesus in Acts chapter 8. Like, you know, he came, he, came, he came to the Lord through the ministry of, you know, Philip. Philip the evangelist. And, and the scripture said, you know, suddenly he began to follow them. He began to follow the crew. And the next thing he saw, you know, this, these guys walking in power, casting out demons. The next thing he said, I also want this power. I want this power. This guy was never truly born again. He said, I want this power so that I can do the same. He thought the power was for gain. In fact, the scriptures, he offered them money until Peter came and rebuked him. Come on. Do we have such testimony today in our church? Our church now is known with certain names. This, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, celebrity attends this church. And so we use that as a leverage to populate the house. It's a house of harlots. That's not the church Christ is building. You can't use men to grandstand your own ministry. You can't use men and their talents, not even gifts, talents, to leverage your work. You can't do that. If you do that, you have polluted the whole process. So what am I saying? If you are there, don't drop the standard of what God has called you to build. 
we raised disciples. Before we ever talked about sonship, we were raising disciples. And the pattern has not changed. If you want some men to come bow to you because somebody wants to call your father, you need to be shut. You need to be shut down because that is not the right order. If all you're looking for, I mean, there are people today. Even some some of you don't know there are people on, online on Facebook, you know, wanting me to be their father. I said, no, don't call me father. I'm not your father. I can help you. I want to help you? I will resource you. I will help you grow. I will help you develop. At most, you can be my disciple, but I'm not your father. That's a whole different ball game. I'm not abdicating my position of responsibility or your, you know, or, or leadership capa- capability. No, I do know what I'm doing. I have people that I can call. Yes, my own sons, because indeed I birthed them. They lived with me. I I groomed them. I grew them. Released them. We've got to understand this thing. You're not running around. With you know somebody calling you father, somebody calling you daddy. Come on, those are those those are ways, amen, that the enemy uses to destroy you without even knowing. You think people are hailing you? You think that is you know a prestige? No, that's a subtle way of destroying you and destroying the ministry and even destroying those people, because all they are looking at is one man that knows better, that is high up there. Therefore, they abdicate their own responsibility to you. Say so, no, don't do that. Don't call me father. Don't bow to me. I don't want that. And that's not, the, that's not the first time I'm doing it. I've always done that all my life in, through ministry. No. Don't give to me. A, uh, don't accord me a, a position that heaven has not given to me. I don't want it. You see, you need sight to be able to do those things. Because when you begin, people begin to call you father and all that. Then it's easy to, you know, to collect their God knows what. It's easy to want to speak into their life even things that heaven never commanded you. It's easy for witchcraft and manipulation to creep into your life, into your ministry. Before you know it, you become an instrument of the dragon himself. Oh, come on. We cannot afford in this day that we're living in to compromise the standard. We cannot afford to drop the standard. We cannot afford to pretend as if we don't understand what heaven is speaking or demanding of us as church. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. And so as we continue to look into this whole principle of sure foundation, how sure is your foundation? How certain are you of what you're building? How accurate are you? Of the material in which you, you're building with. How certain are you of the people that are building with you? Lest you have the Sambalat and the Tobias among you. Wanting to build with you. Maybe they are there to destroy. But because you, all you want is people. You just want more people. You just want more people. So you don't mind gather the Sambalat. You don't mind gather the Tobias. You don't mind Jezebel in your church. You don't mind Ahab in your church. As long as they're coming with the money. They're coming with the fame. They're coming with their popularity. And coming with the shame too. And coming with the, their prostitution. As long as, they, as long as they're coming. Just let them come. <laughs> Listen to me. They may all come. But this is, this is the day of separation. Yes. The Bible says in that day. There will be a separation of the goats and the sheep. There has to be a separation. The day of harvest is a, it's not a day, it's not just, the day of harvest is not just the day of gathering. It's a day of separation. The day of harvest is not just about the day of ingathering. It's also a day of separation. That is a word for you. So heaven is saying, hey, look into your life. Re-examine the nets. That you have built in the name of a network. <laughs> and look into. Look into. Let heaven give you sight. To look into what you are gathering. Into that network. You call the apostolic. Come on. This is the day of the Lord. We've got to understand. The heartbeat of the father for this new day. We've got to have clear insight. Into the demand of the Lord for this new day. The measuring standard of God cannot be compromised. The yastic of the measuring of the temple cannot be compromised. Heaven is measuring us. Measuring our temple. Measuring our altars. 
So as we continue to look into this whole process of the certainty, the shortness, the assuredness, the, the, con- the concreteness of what we are building called the foundation. Because the foundation, like I've said before, is what holds everything that we define as our house, as our life, as our values. You see, your entire value system, the entire philosophy of your spirituality is built on that thing called foundation. The reason why you will fight and reject certain truth is because certain things were not accurate within your foundation. The reason why you will challenge the man of God who tells you the truth is because something things are wrong within your foundation. Hallelujah. The reason why you will challenge and fight all right, and, and, you know, and, and, and refuse and reject and even become aggressive to the things of the spirit, to the demand of God, to the word of God, to truth is because what ought to be able to speak to what you are receiving you know, in your foundation, it's not there. It's not there. So you see, when heaven throws certain truth at you, or says certain things, immediately you get angry. You get rebellious. You get agitated. No, I don't want that. No. Why? Because something was not right in your foundation. So this is a day that before we go on, before we go on, that's the, that's the joy, that's the beauty of this teaching, that before we go on, now we are just stepping into the dawn of a new day, the dawn of a new season. We are just about entering the borderline. We're just coming into the, the boundary, hallelujah, of, of a new day. We are coming to the end of the old and we are about to step into the new as we are about to step into this new that is calling for us to wear new garments, amen, new mentality, new Pers- you, know, you know, perspective uh, as the Lord begins to say, now we need to wash ourselves from the old. As the Lord is saying, now come to Gilga, you know, and have yourself, you know, a, a, a new order of covenant with me so we can march on to the next dimension. As, as heaven is bringing us to all this place, as we are leaving this mountain, coming to the next, next dimension of the mountain of the law, there is a time frame saying, reevaluate. You know what I said? There is a time frame that says re-evaluate. Because what was accepted in the past, the things that God looks at in the past and shown, amen, he will not accept them in, in this new day. No, you cannot go on with those things. Bad character, bad attitude, you know, bad belief system, bad value system. You cannot go on with those things in this new day. You can't go in with ungodliness, with perversion, with corruption. You can't go in with blindness, partial blindness. You can't go in, go in with hatred. You can't go in with, you know, with, with, with false belief. You can't go in. You know, with all this ancestral new age spirit, you can't go in with that. You can't go in with witchcraft. You can't go in, hallelujah, with manipulations. Whatever way you manipulate people. You can't go in with that. You see what happened? <laughs> These are the things that, it, the, you know, the disciples should have, you know, should have touched themselves before the day of the, you know, of the birth of the church in Act of the Apostle. You know, as they were, can you imagine that as they were in the upper room, these were things that they should have been taught. They should have been teaching themselves. And I knew those were the things that the Lord were emphasizing because they were there for 120 days. They were all there, working together among themselves, perfecting, you know, all those things. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost fully came, then the Spirit of God came. But before that day came, they ought to have been working on certain realities, building on certain things. So that whoever is going to join, understand the value system of this new thing heaven is birthing. That's why we've got to clarify the next matching order. We've got to let people know that before you come into this thing, before you zealously just join this thing, you've got to know where we're going. You've got to know the demand. You've got to know the value standard. You've got to know that there's a measure. There's a yastic that is required that you don't just come by zeal. Yeah, we want to, oh, new thing. Like, you know, in the past, everybody's speaking prophetic, apostolic, rev, you know, reformation. I mean, it's become, you know, a chorus. It's become, you know, a, a general thing that everybody talked about. Even people who, don't, who are not even born again, they're talk, in fact, they're not talking apostolic, they've become apostles. That's what we saw in the second day. But in this third day, no, that's not going to happen. 
Because if you if if you come in with you know a non challenge you know wrong belief you know uh, uh, you know pervert, perverted you know the, you know uh, presumptive m- mindset, what happened to you know uh, uh, to Ananias and Sapphira? Exactly is what's going to be happening to a lot of people in different levels. I mean, nobody cursed them. Nobody. The, the, all Peter said is, you should have considered lying lying to the Holy Spirit. And the guy fell down and died. What, what a standard. What a day. And that is just at the beginning point of the church. Now, not talking about, you know, to us, the, 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 the you know, the, the, the maturing season of the church. You may say, well, well, that happened back then. I don't think that is going to happen again. You'll be surprised. Because that the God who established that order, that church, is still the same God that is speaking to us today. He has not changed. His standard has not changed. If that was the standard he used in establishing the foundation, what standard do you think he will use today in perfecting this, you know, the, the foundation of the building? And Ananias and Sapphira, they thought they could get away with lie. With lie. Lie. They sold, the, they sold their property. It was theirs. The money was still theirs. But because they are not dealt with insecurity, they want to be accepted by a concept of what they give. Is that not what is happening in our church today? We promote people you know, into all kinds of positions because of what they give. We know the highest tight payer in the church. We know the, the lowest tight payer. We, we watch the offering and see what people are giving so that we can you know, reward them with position. Because if we reward people, the best tight titles in our church with position, then we do what? We cage them. We, we pin them down. They can't leave. Then you make them apostles. You make them, you make them elders. You, I mean, I'm talking about things that we have seen in the past. The things that we have dealt with in the past. And the things that have established a lot of churches today in Africa. That's why today you see most of the churches in Africa, you know, people who are, you know, who are at the end of affair are very wealthy people. They are very rich people who call themselves pastors, ministers. They are very wealthy people in the secular world. And they were put there, you know, strategically. Those positions were given to them. They create ministry around them. Once they see that uh, the GO sees that you have, you know, you, you've got resources, you've got money, you've got, you know, you know, a cloud around you. Suddenly, they create a ministry around you and for you. So tomorrow you cannot say, "Well, the Lord is speaking to me to leave." No, you you already have something that you've got to be attending to all your life. You see. The, the, we talk about iniquity in the high places. Now, I don't know why I'm emphasizing this this morning, but certainly the Lord must be speaking to somebody out there. Oh God, the Father is speaking to his church and we need to hearken to the voice of God. This will not be a day to hear these things and shun it and pretend as if, no, well, it doesn't affect me. It does affect you. At least today, this word is being fulfilled in your ears. You're hearing it. You cannot, you cannot say, well, I didn't know. The word will judge you. The word of God will judge you. You can be saying all the right thing. You can be declaring all the right truth. You can be speaking prophetic. Speaking apostolic. And everything is sounding accurate. Perfect. But guess what? If your motive is not, is not aligning to what you are declaring. You will be judged harshly. Because I know people do that. I mean the Lord has dealt with me on those areas. Never say things you don't mean. Don't say things because they're nice. Don't just be a nice person. Be a person of life. Let your words and your character be one. I don't have a dual life. I have one life. If you know me, you know my character. I don't pretend to be what I'm not. And I guess that's what... The Father wants every one of us to reflect. Preach who you are. Preach what has been processed in your life and through your life. You see, that was the kind of disciples Jesus chose. I mean, he picked a man that was not afraid to slay the ears of another man. That was how brutal, that was how rough this guy Peter was. Yet, 
Jesus chose him because he knew he was still going to go through a process. He chose him to be the leader of his movement. Wow. Don't pretend to be a saint when you know you are no one. Because, I mean, the day people know who your, your, your true character, your true nature, great will be the fall. Be quick to let people know who you are. So they can help you. They can pray for you. They can stand with you. Don't pretend to be what you're not. Don't, don't be two-faced. It's our challenges we are facing in the body of Christ, even as leaders, as members of the body of Christ. We cannot be trusted. The moment we get a position, we get some, you know, some, you know, influence, some, you know, money into our hands. We show our true nature. We show who we truly are. Come on. No wonder the true riches of the kingdom cannot be committed into our hands because all they do is just to test us with common wealth. We can't handle that. How can we handle the true riches? Hallelujah. I love it when the Father just speaks. I just love it when the Father just speaks. Speak. When the Father speaks to us, we cannot doubt. We cannot but to know. This is God speaking. So as I conclude this first session, this morning, when I ask you, what is it going to be? Are you going to compromise because of what you see out there? Are you going to allow the voice of the charlatans and the merchants to derail you, to shut you down, to discourage you, to brainwash you, to limit you from pressing in into that which heaven has called you into? In the entire generation of Noah, it was just him and the eight, the Bible says, that were saved. His life brought a standard of judgment to his generation. You didn't hear what I said. Noah's life was the standard of judgment to his generation. The father looked at Noah and said, Noah, if you can stand right for me, if you can, if you can be found righteous in the midst of this perverted generation, for this 120 years, or even more, then there is no excuse for anybody not to be judged. My word. Noah was a divine representative of the standard of God to his generation. I guess that's what the Father is calling us. Would you want to be part of that standard in, in this generation? I want to be part of that. I want to be part of a generation that the Father can look down and say, I found Noah in the midst of corruption and perversion and wickedness, you know, and, and the dropping of the standard. I found Noah who is righteous. There's none like him. The same, the same principle, the same word God said with regards to Job. There's none like him. There's none as righteous as Job. And Satan said, Would the man serve you for nothing? Let me test him for you. And God said, Go ahead, but don't touch his soul. Yes. We will be tested, we will be tried. But within that, the Bible said, We must possess our soul in righteousness. Come on. We must possess our soul in righteousness. You may lose everything. Don't lose the value that you've subscribed to. The values of the kingdom. This is my prayer daily that the kingdom of God will make his grand appearance within my life. And my life will be a reflection of the standards of heaven. That I will not compromise it. That though he slay me, I will not deny him. That I might not have food at home on my table. I might not know where the next meal is coming from. That I stand looking unto heaven where my help comes from. That my faith is intact. Trusting in the Lord. Believing on him who has called me to be his representative. That in abundance, that in lack, that in need, that in sickness, that in health. That my faith is not 
dangling. It's not dropping. It's not shaking. It's not moved. That nothing, nothing defines my joy than to be in his presence, beholding his face and carrying out on the earth his desire. My word. That's the kind of life I want to live. And my, my, life, my, my life is not determined by my circumstance. My life is determined by my state of being in him. Can we come to this standard of life? That my joy is not determined by the song we sing in the, in the church on Sunday morning. And after getting home, sorrow now baptize you. Come on. That your salvation is not, it's not, it's not, you know, wishy-washy. It's not here and there. It's not up and down. It's not fluctuating like yo-yo. Come on. That you have stability, stability of mind, stability of life, stability of understanding. That that which you do is based on that which you have come to experience. The things Jesus began to do and teach. Oh, come on. It's a day of elevation, brethren. It's a day of divine standard. Don't drop that standard. Keep it high. When nobody is there, keep it high. In your walk with God, keep it high. When nobody is looking, keep that standard high. Because the life you live in the secret will define, hallelujah, your ability of representation before men. The life you live in the secret will define your ability, your capability of representation, hallelujah, before men. No man can face realities in the open if you don't have a stable, internal, configured life in the secret place. Let the grace of God help you. Let the mind of God enable you in this new day. Oh, Father. We love you. If you are there, I just want to minister to you. As the Spirit of God minister to you. Oh, la ba 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 ya, come on, shika yada. Come on. Let's speak to the Lord. Let's speak to the Lord. Masa kaya dodo do mashiki yanda. Let's bless the name of the Lord. We bless your name, Father. Oh, mde baba. Come on, let us pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Halava kaya. Pray in the spirit. De 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 mo. Kaponde. Baladadash. Tayada. Spirit of the Lord. We raise the standard. We raise the standard this morning. You want to give a title to this exaltation? Call it raising the standard. We raise the standard in our lives, in our minds, in our thoughts. We raise the standard of our faith. We raise the standard of our belief. We raise the standard of our prophetic projection. We raise the standard of our engagement. We raise the standard of our sight. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim and we declare this day, Father, Karabayanda, that your spirit will perfect Magada Dushtayada, your call in our life, that we will not drop the standard. We raise the standard. In the name of Jesus, we set our eyes on you this morning, O oh God. Let your kingdom come into our mind. Let your kingdom come into our thoughts. Let your kingdom come into our imagination. Let your kingdom come into our belief system. Let your kingdom come into our value system. Let your kingdom come into our belief, into that which we hold unto. Let your kingdom come. Invade the faculties of our existence. Renew us. Reform us. Transform us. Restore us. Bring us to the place of elevation. In the name of the Lord God Almighty. Let your kingdom come into our homes. Into our family. Let your kingdom come into the life of our children. Let your kingdom come into the life of our family, our wives. Let your kingdom come into the life of our extended family. Let them begin to see in the name of Jesus. The demand, the demand, the demand of heaven for this new day. 
let your kingdom come we speak in the name of jesus let your kingdom come into our finance let your kingdom come into our business into our career let let your kingdom come lord into our community may your kingdom come as we raise the standard let your kingdom come father we declare may your kingdom come into our government into our nation may your kingdom come lord into our generation we lift the standard up let your kingdom come come on come on don't give up don't give up don't give up brother don't give up sister stay stay on the course stay on the path hold on to the promise don't settle for Ishmael don't settle for Ishmael don't settle for the voice of Sarah to give back to Ishmael no no in the name of Jesus stand your ground Hallelujah. Come on, profess upon yourself now. Spirit of the Lord, take your place. Oh, hallelujah. I'm excited in my spirit, man. Blessed be the name of the Lord who caused us to triumph in righteousness. Brethren, I want to thank you for being part of this morning encounter. Well, I'm going to be coming back in the afternoon. I think the next, uh, the next uh, two hours I'm going to be back by 12 o'clock then I'm sure we're going to be dealing with the whole issue of the teaching on Shell Foundation. It is my pleasure to share this word with you this morning. Thank you so very much. If you have tuned in this morning, please share this message. You can download them. You can share them with other people. Please uh, share the like uh, button. Share the share button. And uh, yes, let people know what God is doing. I will be back by 12 o'clock. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful morning.